Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to my channel. I am Monet and you're watching Life is Monet. Today I'm going to share with you guys some books that I feel deserve just a smidge more hype in the bookish community, especially here on booktube. These are some books that I have read and love that have stuck with me that I think other people would enjoy as much as I did if they were recommended much more than they currently are. So the first book I actually don't own a copy of because I gave it away to a friend who loved it by the way and that is going to be Dry by Neil Shusterman. I know that this book uh, was fairly hyped up like when it first released and it was pretty popular for like I was like the first two years that it's been out um, but since then I have not seen a single person talk about this book on any bookish platform. I've also not seen it like on display on like bookstores that I've gone to and I'm just like oh this deserves to be talked about so much more. I read this book from start to finish like I did not put it down I read it in one sitting because it is just that type of book where you get swept up in the story and like it's over in the blink of an eye so this is right up Neil Schussman's usual alley which is going to be writing YA dystopians and so we are set in California at the start of a drought and so we watch chaos and panic descend across California as people reckon with the fact that there is no water. And scientifically, you can die of dehydration in a very short time frame, like literally in one to two days with no water, you can die. And so we're following three uh, central characters, if I remember correctly, I think we're following um, at least two central characters as their family like grapples with this. Um, there's so much representation around like different perspectives of society and like people that are so like materialistic and like so selfish that they go crazy like buying up and like stealing all the water that they can um there's this panic um descending upon the youth and the, and the families as well and then there's even like I remember in the book there was like this doomsday preparation family that were like always prepare for Armageddon always prepare for like the worst possible like scenario so they had the ability to like sustain themselves and they had like this bunker and just watching like how people react in society when there is a dire need for a basic necessity and you have it and they don't people get very very vicious and so just the different like character studies and like literally watching like the tick by tick like I remember this book had timestamps because it's literally going by the hours like days and hours after the announcement on the news that there is no more water and you start to see people that are like pretending to be like of the people and like on the ground and getting like full coverage and then like there's a point where like the news anchors themselves are like actually like can I get a chopper like a helicopter to like airlift me out of here because wow like I was just reporting that we don't have water but like now that I'm off air and it's starting to sink in like we really don't have fucking water I remember like like out loud gasping laughing like jaw dropping moments when I was reading this book it's not like a perfect story by any means but if you are someone that is looking for like a palate cleanser you want a book that can get rid of like a reading slump a book that you can read in like a short time frame like to take on a trip with you to take on an airplane with you that you can really be consumed with honey this is it do yourself a favor and pick up dry by Neil Schusterman because like the time like the experience and the time that I had reading it was better than the book itself. So keeping with that vein, I'm gonna talk about some other books that I read in one sitting and like literally fell in love with because like these are like like fun, kind of like thrilling type reads. I love books like that. They don't get a lot of love because again, there's like a lot of imperfections to those kind of stories, but there's just something about a book that has the capacity to keep me wholly entertained and like fully focused and distracted from the outside world for like, it feels like I'm cocooned for a moment and I really love those experiences and like I love the joy that they bring me even though like it's not a perfect book but these books that I'm about to talk about in my opinion are kind of perfect and they deserve more hype. TJ Newman is one of them. Um, I only physically own Falling which is a like thriller book where there are hijackers on a plane that has taken hostage the family of the pilot and they are determined to make the pilot crash uh, the plane to bring awareness to the suffering and the oppression of their people in a foreign country. And so there is like this another book that kind of like has this countdown moment from like when the things actually happen and to see the flight attendants actually come together like and work together to like assess 
assist the pilot and to like calm down the passengers and also work together because there is someone on the plane who is a part of the hijackers and their identity is a secret. And so these flight attendants have to work together to figure out who on the plane is working with the hijackers because the person on the plane is actually reporting back to the hijackers on the ground that have his family hostage. And um, there's just so many like security measures in place following 9-11. And so um, they have no direct access to uh, the pilot himself. And when I figured out who it was that was the like accomplice, honey, I was like, Oh, this just took a whole another turn and I gave this book five stars. Like it's a book that you, it's like a popcorn thriller. I don't recommend reading it on a plane because it might, I mean, if that's your thrill, if you love a good adrenaline, like this is it. TJ Newman um, was a career flight attendant herself. And so she really understands the gravity of the situation, the protocol, the reactions of the staff, because I mean, she has firsthand experience, not with a hijacker situation, but just being a flight attendant. And it was so nice to see flight attendants depicted in a way that just felt more realistic because people see them and they assume that they're just concierge service that's there to serve snacks and drinks on a plane, but they're actually there for the safety of the passengers and so like what does it look like when you put that into action the next book is also by tj newman and it's a new release called drowning and this one was so 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 much better than falling i gave both of them five stars but i feel like falling gave me more of like a thrill vibe and like it had my heart like pumping but when i say the emotional investment that went into drowning like it brought me to tears i was actually crying when i got done with these books and they're so short and they're so good do yourself a favor and pick them up so in drowning we're actually following a plane um that has crashed and it has landed in like water and so like it's about to like sink and like drown and so like it's sitting on like this pivotal kind of like landscape where they have a short amount of time to get all of the passengers out of the plane um but you have characters that are also like on the ground like one of the engineers that is trying to um build this machine to be able to like withstand the pressure under the water to go and get them her husband or her ex-husband and her child is actually on the plane itself. So like there's just this heightened level of emotions and like pressure and panic because everybody's trying to work together to like solve this situation. There's this older like elderly Jewish couple in the book as well that like just stole my freaking heart and I just, I cannot rave about TJ Newman enough. Both of her books are so, 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 so good. And I hope that from this video, you guys go and pick one up. I have listened to both of them on audio and I think that that also like increases um, my enjoyment of the book as well. So I read this book twice actually. I listened to it on audio and then I reread it physically and like my enjoyment was the same no matter what. So yes. The next is one that you guys have heard me rave about, but I just feel like no one is really talking about it and I wanna change that. And that is gonna be The 22 Murders of Madison May. This is another thriller that you can just really get swept up in and it takes you away. And it is so cool. Cause like, this is a sci-fi thriller that plays around with like a multiverse and like multiple timelines. So we are following um, different characters as they investigate the murders of Madison May, which is happening on different timelines. There is one person traveling the multiverse to kill every version of Madison May that exists and they're trying to figure out how to stop that and so there's one like investigative individual that ends up getting trapped in the multiple timelines while they're trying to hunt down the killer and they are having a really hard time like it is nearly impossible for them to get back to their original timeline so they are forced to deal with the fact that like they are in a reality where everything about their life mimics the real one but there are some changes that are like significantly different so for example Felicity which is a journalist that gets trapped in the different timelines she has a boyfriend and one of them he's a really good cook and in one of them he's not in one of them he is more of a reader and the other one he isn't so it's like kind of being in the same world but having someone come and like kind of move your picture on your dining room table slightly to the left or slightly to the right or something like that where it's like so you feel like someone's playing tricks on you but this was so so entertaining to read and I wish that more people talked about it seriously. So the next one is like one of my all-time like favorite reads ever. I have to credit this author so much with 
widening my perspective of the world and I cited this book so many times when I was completing my first master's degree that like I feel like I owe a part of a, a part of my degree like I should just scribble in his name at the bottom seriously um and that is going to be new age of empire how racism and colonialism still rule the world this is a very short book but when I say I wrote in this like I was the author with him like we were co-writing this together this is one of the only books that I have seriously seriously like annotated and underlined and like put my thoughts with his and I love going back to like read what I like ended up writing within the story because the more that I learned about world events um the more knowledgeable that I became the more that this book just ended up meaning so much more to me it is so unique to read from someone a part of the slavery diaspora but he actually lives in the UK so he's talking about slavery in the US and its global economic impact and how it propped up so many European nations particularly Britain and he connects that to China and Israel and all the different like modern colonial states and how we never really got rid of colonialism like we just moved into a new age of like a globalistic society but like the world order is still the same the like focuses and the priorities and the techniques are absolutely still the same except it's masking itself in so many ways so it's so beautiful to witness him calling out a spade as a spade and showing you how to recognize when you see colonialistic behaviors from a nation from a government and being able to recognize it for what it is especially when it is masquerading as something that it is not and this book is one that like I would go out like if I was rich enough I will hand out free copies of this book. I would just buy a ton and I would just start handing them out to everyone because uh, this is one that I will say changed my life. It changed my perspective on the world. And there was so much like recognition that I felt from the author because there was a lot of like perspectives that we shared that I could see but I couldn't name. And so like he is so like eloquent and like the way that he delivers things and the way that he can convey emotions and thoughts that I was unable to. And so I felt like this book gave me advocacy and it could do the same thing for so many other readers where you're, you're witnessing something and you don't really know how to sound the alarm or what to say without seeming like you're like crying roof or you're like always harping on the past because you'll see people saying like, oh, that was 100 years ago, let it go. Um, he directly weaves threads between what we know um, from like early 1900s to today and how like that still matters and how to call that out and so I'm forever grateful to this author and I hope that you guys watching this video will pick this up and learn something. So the next one is The Intimacy Experiment. A couple years ago I was diving back into like the romance genre because I had not read romance in like years and this was one of the ones that I ended up picking up just on a whim like I seen the cover and there was just something about the neon that like drew me to it. And then you find out that we're following Naomi who is an ex-sex worker turned sex educator and then Ethan who is a rabbi and they decide to work together because um, this synagogue needs to attract a younger audience because majority of their congregation is older and Ethan is a young um, rabbi and so he wants to attract new individuals and so he's looking for ways to relate to the new world and to be able to tie religion to modern things that the user today is is dealing with and one of which is this confident around your sexuality and your sexual relationship with your partner and so he goes against the grain um it makes a lot of people uncomfortable by hiring Naomi to come in and teach classes around how to have a healthy sexual relationship with yourself as well as with your partner and so this ruffles a lot of feathers and there is a romance that kicks off between the two of them and I think that this is just done so well because there's so much respect for Ethan's religion um but it doesn't turn turn him into like a prude and like he can still have you know a healthy romantic life and he can date and he can explore and he can like you know look for a wife and also still be devout to his religion and I think that this is a great example of like how to tie in like religion with like modern society and like the modern dating scene and there was just so much growth between him and like Naomi because you would think that she does like all the educating because she has all this past as a sex worker but like Ethan comes prepared honey in a lot of ways that matters and Ethan himself you know he is dominant 
in a lot of ways that just made me appreciate him and also like made me blush a little bit like not because it was like overly steamy but also just because like this is a rabbi doing these things and I just I appreciate that so shout out to the author. The next is a newer release that I have seen a few people talk about but I just wanted everybody to rave about this book like I feel like it should be a booktube darling and it's not and that is The Lesbiana's Guide to Catholic School. Yamilet will forever have my heart like I cannot tell you the time honey that I had reading this book the representation and the thematic messages are so important for you today to see and I am so like just in awe and grateful that publications are now picking up stories that is this unique but also like so relevant to society today so Yamilet is being raised um, by her mother who is devoutly Catholic and she is an older sibling to her younger brother and there's a lot of pressure for Yamilet on behalf of her mother to like you know, be what she wants her to be, but also to keep her brother in line, who has a knack for really finding trouble. And so Yamilet is sent off to this Catholic school after being outed at her last school, and she's determined to stay in the closet because the reception that she got by being queer at her last school, which wasn't even a religious school, was not very warm. And so she's like, the last thing I want to do is be outed as a lesbian at a Catholic school, at a Catholic institution nonetheless. On top of the fact that she's having a hard time really being her true self because her mother is Catholic, and so it makes her feel like she's devoutly like anti-queer, anti-LGBTQ. Um, and there's just so much mounting pressure for Yamilet to live up to her mother's expectations. And she is constantly blamed for the decisions of her brother, even though she really does not have a lot to do with it. Because like her brother... <laughs> he gets in trouble very often and he's just he has more freedom to explore his curiosity and to explore the things that attract him in a way that Yamilet is not able to because she has more pressure on herself um as the female so this book is absolutely six out of five stars it's always going to be a part of my collection I really wish that there was like special editions of this one because I would definitely grab it but there is this book and another one that I really loved which should be on this list of books that deserve more hype but I didn't add it and it's how moon foot that fell in love with the universe these two stories like reading them together is so powerful it's in such a powerful message and they both show hispanic representation and i i just love that that is out there for young hispanic females to pick up and read and to see themselves and the struggles that they face every single day navigated by someone who looks and sounds and has the cultural background just like them i didn't realize uh how much uh hispanic representation this list actually had because the next uh, group of books is a duology that has a bit of the same thing so we have we set the dark on fire and we unleash the merciless storm I have had these books like stick with me like especially like the the plot and the characters for so freaking long that I feel like it's time for me to reread them to see if I'm going to enjoy them as much as I did but these are definitely two books that stick with me and have stuck with me since I read them like three or four years ago so I'm gonna try to explain the synopsis of this one um I have not read it in a few years but hopefully this this makes sense so this is a dystopian duology so YA dystopian duology where in this world the men are raised up to lead and to hold positions of influence and power especially in the government and the females have one of two choices if they're lucky they would be a primera which is the leading lady of the house and one who assists her husband in the career and the running of the household and then there is the segunda which is the wife who bears all the children and fulfills a lot of the primal and like sexual desires of the husband so and what we think of today um where women of our society especially me we're expected to work and take care of the home or like be the supportive like secretary wife and also bear all the kids this is divided into two roles in this society and so danny which is one of the characters that we're following she is from the fringes of society and there is nothing but oppression and poverty and death and famine basically on the um outskirts of society and so her family actually forged her pay so that she can join the society and like kind of cross the border and so Danny has a lot of pressure to be successful here and also to keep it a secret because if they find out um that she is not legally on this land she will be outcasted back to what she feels like is a death sentence of just poverty and hunger and there's actually a relationship between Danny and the second wife of the home which is the one expected to bear the children because Danny is the pre-meta so she's expected to help run the household um a relationship between her and the second wife actually develops so there is queer representation in here where two women are falling in love even though they're supposed to be subservient to a cisgender heterosexual male and I feel like 
so many people get caught up on the romance of this book which I think is the weakest point especially if you read this book only really hoping for the romance then you will not like We Unleash the Merciless Thorn because this is a story about resistance and this is a story about rebellion and this is a story about bringing equality and fairness to everyone and not just having to witness from outside the borders one country prosper off of the backs of everybody else in the world and so the romance is probably like the back seat to the story. So if you do end up picking this up, highly recommend that you don't harp on that because especially in the second book, there is a good amount of time where um, they are separated from each other and they are led into this resistance that is supposed to be bringing a revolt um, and hopefully a revolution to the society as they know it. And then for the next one, I am so sorry to have to do this to you guys, but like, I love this book. This is one of my favorite fantasy stories that I have ever freaking read and that is going to be Dawn of Wonder. This is book one to The Awakening. It's an indie release by an indie author um, and we have been waiting like this book came out in 2015 um, so as of eight years now we still don't have a sequel and we don't know if, when we'll be getting one. The author has experienced a lot of health concerns and health setbacks that has impacted his ability to finish the series. So I've just been kind of following on his blog to get updates but I do not regret reading this book. If there's any book that I feel like I would wait forever and a day, a lifetime and a day for it, which is a sequel to this story because I, this is everything that I love about fantasy. Oh my goodness, this is like a perfect <laughs> fantasy story for me. So this is a coming of age revenge story but the first book is really just him coming of age because he is trying to get stronger. Um, Aiden is a young boy that is very like adventurous and fun and bolsterous in all the right ways um, although he experiences a lot of physical and emotional abuse at the hands of his father he finds solace in his best friend Kauri except one day their village is raided and Kauri is taken as a slave prisoner and so Aiden is a young child who does everything he can to try to save her and he ultimately ends up failing and hurting himself and so he has a long road to recovery and a long road to just be strong enough to go and face and hopefully save not just Kauri but a lot of the other um, individuals that have been stolen from their land and so we watch him um, grow so much throughout the story he actually goes off to the school where he's learning to train he's learning how to fight um, but he has a lot of just PTSD from the abuse of his father and there are so many things that kind of trigger Aiden throughout the story and so it's a heart-wrenching experience because you watch him grow so much and find a community and find friends and find strength but every time he comes face to face with his father or face to face with something that triggers the memories of his father he breaks down into um the scared and sad little boy that he was when he was growing up and so like this is what I think a phenomenal character growth because it shows like how messy getting over trauma and like overcoming you know a lot of your past like experiences to a good place of healing is really about because it's not an upward trajectory like you see him win and you see him lose you see him go forward and you see him go backwards and like it just it tore my heart out of my chest like I was so 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 proud of him so many times and there were times where I just really wanted to reach into the book and just coddle him and just hug him and just let him know that everything was going to be okay because like there's a lot of pressure like there's a lot of challenges for him and sometimes he wins and sometimes he doesn't and so where this book ends like I am dying literally like I cannot tell you how excited I am about the possibility of getting the sequel sometime soon like the author has said that he's working on revisions at this point so like it has for the most part been written um the next two books I think have been written but he's trying to like rework it and so like I hate to do this to you guys but like do yourself a favor and like pick this one up especially if like you're a fantasy lover like me because I'm not always a fan of like coming of age stories because of like how they're done um and like this is a revenge story that I'm excited for like I cannot wait for Aiden to embark on this journey of going to like try to save Kauri and like like you don't even know if she's still gonna be alive because like years have passed and so like he's literally a child he's like a 10 12 year old boy when she's taken away and so like I don't even know like is he gonna be 18 is he gonna be 20 when he goes after her I have no idea I am so sorry about that guys my camera memory card ran out of space so I am currently like 
exporting <laughs> off of that card but i wanted to come back and finish my thoughts because this is going to take like 15 minutes to get all this footage off of my sd card but yeah I love this book. I hope that you guys pick up not just this one, but some of the other ones that I've mentioned within this video. Um, thank you guys for making it to the end. And as always, I will see you in my next one. Bye.